we were talking about this. We were sitting there. I don't know how this came up in a conversation going, oh, man, that was a great film. Uh, you couldn't make that nowadays. How often do you say that to yourself? I think I'm guessing probably pretty often. Pretty often. Pro- probably pretty often. So uh, we actually decided to, and you've been tweeting us, we'll, we'll read them after this segment. We decided to put together a segment here. A definitive list. We'll be updating it. Uh, the top five films that you couldn't make in 2016. Let's do it. Uh, for reasons that are self-explanatory, they would be far too triggering. Yes. So a lot of these, you'll you'll, you'll notice some trends here. Uh, let's get right into it. Number five is a bit of an obvious one. Not without my daughter. Now, a lot of millennials watching are going, what's that? This is a film made with Sally Field, I want to say in the early 90s, about a woman who married a Muslim. They go to Iran, and uh, obviously he keeps the daughter, beats the hell out of some women. She finds out with his Islamic family, kind of how, this happens a lot, by the way. People make their pilgrimage, either they're going to Mecca, secular Westerners, they marry these Muslims, they don't know what they've signed up for, and... uh, they can't get their kids back. We had Q on the show. Remember the mm-hmm. woman who had this yep. actually suffer in the United States? Now, here's yeah. the deal. These people, I think Alfred Molina, Sally Field, I'm sure they're probably hashtag I'm with her. They're probably to the left. But back then, because it hadn't been politicized, the Islamic mistreatment of women, the Islamic uh, basically complete disregarding of, of women's rights, it was just seen as a human rights issue. It wasn't seen as a xenophobia or political issue. People weren't afraid to speak out against it, including liberals, because it was just like, don't wear fur. Um, it was just an issue that, well, you shouldn't beat women, and this is a real problem in the Middle East, and this is a problem with Islam, and at that point it wasn't the cause du jour, so even leftists back then felt okay doing it. You could not do this nowadays. Uh, here's a clip to show you what I'm talking about. Oh, man, he's going full John Cena on her. Look at this. Ooh. Mean hook on that guy. Mean hook. Doc got, got some punch. She had it coming. Number four. Dirty Harry. We're getting the tweets coming in here. I think a lot of people talked yep. about this. A lot of people have actually uh, suggested the one that is actually number two coming up soon. Dirty Harry, this is actually more so the, the, the franchise. Um, we came up with this. We th- were thinking play Misty for me, and then we thought sudden impact. And the reason mm-hmm. was because women got the crap beaten out of them. Clint Eastwood punches women right in the face, including Afro hookers. And then we realize he does that in pretty much every film (laughs) in that era. Uh, But Dirty Harry, you see a lot of it. Uh, Here's something that's also really important with Dirty Harry. Not only the sexist stuff, you know, the sort of insensitive stuff that you couldn't do nowadays. You'd be called into HR. But the concept of Dirty Harry was coming after a crime wave in the the 60s and in the 70s where people felt really unsafe. And uh, Dirty Harry was a police officer who didn't play by the rules, who would definitely be rough around the edges, but got stuff done. He was a hero. It's the exact opposite of the Black Lives Matter thing right now. If this were happening today, Dirty Harry would, instead of uh, shooting the rapist in the street, he would be wearing a body camera, taking him in for questioning, and bringing in his lawyer with a lot of vowels in his name, and then eventually (laughs) letting him free. So it's not just the insensitivities, but the the concept Uh of Dirty Harry would not work today. Uh, which I think it, it, you're seeing that a little bit with Trump. People wanted a dirty Harry. They want a strong man to come back when they felt uh, disenchanted, I uh, think so. stripped of power. I think right. uh, this clip captures the chauvinism perfectly. Then what the hell gives you the right to become an inspector when there's men have been out there on the street for 10 or 15 years? The woman's place is in the home. Is that what you are trying to say? Yes. What do you think this yes. is, some kind of encounter group? I want to know what Officer Moore is going to do when somebody points a gun at her and says, hit the deck, you son of a bitch! Uh, she's going to cower. That's what most women do, or they just get hit in the head with a snare drum. Number three. <laughs> Animal House. Yes. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is this because it was too profane? Because No, none of that, actually. And it's not even because it's a bromance. Uh, it's not even because it's just, it's you know, they need to recast it today with women. I guess they kind of did that with Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, mm-hmm. which was horrendously unfunny. But Animal House... It, 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 some scenes in there are the kind of scenarios that give Lena Dunham and Amy Schumer nightmares. Uh, this You realize when you watch Animal House, to me what's so telling, is it started off from the college culture. It was assumed that people just have drunken sexual encounters. That's a big thing that happens in college. Now, again, most of these people in that film, probably pretty pretty liberal today. Uh, mm-hmm. not, not Matheson. Or, uh, he's doing something. He just talked about how he liked Reagan. 
But it, it wasn't even considered a sexist, it wasn't considered a social issue that kids have drunk sex in college. Nobody would have even considered the idea that two people who were both drunk, who had consensual intimate relations, would be considered rape. Now, when you watch this film, you can find at least four or five instances that would be a Salon article. Uh, oh, gosh. I think this captures it pretty well. Now, I knew a girl in high school who stuffed her bra. Really? Yeah, they, she, wore the Just chicken one. she wore the chicken cutlets. Guess what her nickname was? Cutlets. Number two. <laughs> That's it. Everyone knew this was coming. Number two, Blazing Saddles. Blazing. They probably thought it was going to be number one. They probably thought it was going to be number one. They probably thought so. What do you think will be number one? Tweet me at Scratter or tweet him at NotGayJared. It might surprise you. Blazing Saddles. Uh, this could have <laughs> this could have taken up spots <laughs> five through one. Uh, now, this one is not as much the theme, like Not Without My Daughter or Dirty Harry, because there isn't a whole bunch of social commentary in the same way. It is just Mel Brooks at his best, and everything about this film is offensive. Everything about it. Is it racist? Yes. Homophobia? It's got that. Sexist? Absolutely. Xenophobia? That wasn't even a thing back then. But sure, let's go with <laughs> they that. They figured it out. <laughs> they figured it out. It was a movie, Blazing Saddles. I think the reason people love it so much is because it was a film that could only be made at that time yep. by Mel Brooks. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know. that if, if they did remake it today, the N-word would not make an appearance. No, and it's and Django is Django and Chain is not the same thing. No, Django and Chain is not the same thing no. because Quentin Tarantino is a far leftist, and it is kind of providing and it's a drama. Um, it's not the same thing. This was just throwing caution to the wind, as racist as offensive in every which unapologetically, way. Unapologetically, so. unapologetically, it's why. And back then, here's the thing: nobody had to start a march over it. No. Nobody for a second thought that Mel Brooks was a racist. Think about it. He had to cast all the black people for the black people to be treated in a racist way. They loved Mel Brooks. Not a person had a bad yeah. word to say. They don't walk him. out on him like they did Adam Sandler. <laughs> well, that's well, for other reasons as well. well if you've mm, you've yes. seen that film. Uh, well, this clip speaks for itself. Uh, good morning, ma'am. And isn't it a lovely morning? Up yours, nigger. <laughs> I don't know if we have to censor that for radio. I hope I don't we know. don't. I hope we don't. We didn't say it. Just drag up her corpse <laughs> and uh, hit her with the fine. Uh, I don't think we have to say any more about that. If you haven't seen it, go see it. Number one. What's number one? What's it going to be? Ah! Dude looks like a lady, Mrs. Doubtfire. This was a tough one. We thought we could go Tootsie because it was before Mrs. Doubtfire, Dustin yeah. Hoffman. But the reason we picked Mrs. Doubtfire is because it's pretty recent. Really, if you think about it, in the in the span of... We grew up with this movie. We grew up with this film. And here's what's important about Mrs. Doubtfire. If you look at the film, I mean, for those who don't know, Robin Williams plays a woman, becomes a woman in order to become a nanny and spend time with his children. It was pretty pretty progressive for its time. Uh, if you look at it, you know, it was in San Francisco, his brother was gay. It certainly at that time was normalizing gay relationships in a way that you didn't see in a lot of films. It was making it very playful. It certainly wasn't anti-gay. But even the gay characters in this film mock the transsexual situation. Mm -hmm. Even the gay characters who call themselves queens and are professional makeup artists laugh about a man wanting to become a woman because even in the gay community, it was just considered silly and absurd. Of course you can't become a woman. Of course this is funny. Of course this is silly. Of course it's abnormal. So the film, great film by the way, I think Robin Williams film. is one of the best dramatic actors ever. Mm -hmm. I think this is the kind of film mm -hmm. he, sh he where he was perfect. Funny, but with heart, could just rip your heart out of your chest. Kind of like a Ricky Gervais, Steve Carell. There are some comedians who are so good at making you feel empathy. And I think Robin Williams was one of the best. Um, but it, again, the starting off point, kind of like Animal House or Not Without My Daughter, the starting off point was that of assumed abnormality with a man acting like a woman. And that was okay, and it wasn't considered hate speech. And this was not that long ago. So nowadays, when people say, what, why are you so hateful? Well, hate speech, if you say, well, actually, you're born, you're born a boy or a girl. Imagine these script writers back then with Mrs. Doubtfire. Imagine them with Slate, Salon, Daily Cost, HuffPo. There's no way this film could be made, including by liberals that set out to be pro-gay, to be pro-progressive. They would have been eaten alive Here's a good clip to, to convey what I'm talking about. Lady, come on. We gotta call the cops. We gotta dial 911 what? now. Why? Well, Mrs. Doubtfire, he's a she. He's a she. she he's a she. she. What? Uh. <laughs> he's half man, half woman. What? Yes, what? what? 
<laughs> what half man, half woman? They say, get, stay back, pervert. Stay back. Later in there, which is it's just so perfect. This is innocent. It's not hateful at all. But of course, it's crazy. Of course, it's abnormal. A man dressed as a woman is always. It's always gonna. Everything in your blood says this is not natural. It's like seeing an animal flash red in the kingdom. Like, oh my god, that's poison. I shouldn't touch that. This is bad. <laughs> so, uh, send me your tweets at S Crowder. What do you think should be added to the list? This has been. This has been top five movies you couldn't make in twenty. What's that sound? It's the sound of you subscribing. Otherwise, I'm going to send anthrax to your house. There's a button below where you can click my face to go to lotterwithcrowder.com or click one of the videos playing next to me. I think there might be a mystery box. What could it be? Anthrax.